Hello, welcome everyone to a beautiful day for lacrosse. That's Ernie Chapman Stadium you're looking at, Wilson Field in beautiful Orange, California. We got the bagpipes bringing the boys out onto the field. It's the end, this is my favorite season. We've got oranges falling from the sky, from the trees. We're in beautiful orange. And we're wearing orange here in the studio. I'm Kyle Carr with my partner, Justin Lee. Justin, how are you today? Kyle, I am truly excited. We haven't seen lacrosse in about a few weeks or so. We are finally back here at Wilson Field to check out these two teams, number 15 versus number five. This is a big matchup between these two teams. And you know, you gotta be excited when you get ranked teams like this because you know, club lacrosse here at Chapman University, division one, you get to play all these division one schools that you never see these this school play against, you know, because usually, you know, we watch the Division Three here at Chapman University, but Division One is the biggest thing. And, you know, we got to talk about those standings in particular in the SLC with Chapman, you know, obviously right back in there with that powerhouse conversation, but San Diego State is such a big surprise this season. But that, oh, the thing great. is, is, you know, they, they haven't really been tested as much. You know, they haven't played any ranked teams at all this season. They don't get to until they get down to Chapman University. And they actually do play Arizona State tomorrow uh, in their hometown. Arizona also doing a pretty good job so far this season. They, they've kind of, uh, kind of been bringing it up there. Chapman takes on Grand Canyon University tomorrow as well. And USC, UCLA, we usually don't see them struggle in, in standings in particular, but here they are, you know, really down at the very bottom. But you take a look at both of these teams in particular. You know, last year they played in the SLC semifinals. Chapman had the upper hand, 10 goals to seven. So there's a little bit of some bla bad blood out here today between both of these teams. Oh, absolutely. I guess in the uh, benefit of those Sun Devils, though, Liam Nelson no longer a sniper on this Panther squad. So they've got a little bit of comfort there. But we've got some good players coming up from the Panther squad as well. However, we're going to talk about some of the um, coaches and what the coaches have to say about how they feel about the players down the field. And we have Caroline Chang on our sideline with that report. Caroline, what's going on? Thank you so much, Kyle and Justin. Now, it's a beautiful day here in Southern California. My name is Caroline Chang, and I'm going to be your sideline reporter for today's game. Now, I just talked to Coach Callis, who told me that their team has just come back from a long and exhausting road trip. They played four games in 10 days, and out of those three away games, they were able to come off with two wins. Now, they've gotten some rest, and they're ready to get back into it. And now looking at Arizona, Coach Straker told me on the back of the players' uh, jerseys, they have a toss to mental health awareness to the Alex Archie Foundation, which is a really important foundation that looks at student athlete mental health awareness. And he also told me that this is a young team. They're playing some really tough opponents. They've been on a road trip as well, but they've gotten a little bit of rest under them too. And so they're ready to get back into it as well. So it's gonna be an excellent matchup here. And I'm super excited to give you some more updates throughout the game. Throughout the game. My name is Caroline Chang. Back up to you in the booth. Thank you so much, Caroline. Beautiful words from those coaches. And, you know, I, I love the message that the, the Arizona State players have on the back of this shirt. Mental health is a big thing for me, being a veteran. So getting these, getting these support for these athletes, absolutely appreciate that. But I really want to talk to you about Coach Callis. Justin, this guy's basically unstoppable. Well, like, what, what are we going to do uh, with, without this guy? I mean, he's only been here for two seasons. We're already, already hailing him as a king for this program, which he rightfully should be, right? He's one of the best coaches in the entire MCLA. Coach of the year last year, got those honors. Justin Straker also got those honors as well. You know, he's a he's a coach that has a lot of experience. His sixth season under his belt this year. He's got experience in the playoffs. He's got experience in the SLC tournament. So, you know, playing against a team that's highly ranked in the nation, right? I mean, that's going to come very important if you want to take down a big team like Chapman University because you know they're coming out of their their hardest stretch of ranked games this season and here they are one more uh ranked game before they head over to san diego state later down the road and after that it's just clear road after that yeah yeah and to see straker going you know he's got some key players coming that are going to be bringing the heat today <laughs> he's got uh first up in on, on the attack we got brayden rome Braden Rome just is bringing the heat with 17 goals and 18 assists. He's not afraid to pass the ball in those danger areas to get his boys on the board. 2.1 points per game. Can you imagine that? Just 
that's two goals guaranteed for Arizona State with Rome on the field. So the Panthers are going to have to be shutting him down. Moving over to another player on this Sun Devil squad, Kyle Decker. I like my Kyles, but I don't know. Are we going to shut him down today? 22 goals and eight, six assists. Sorry, he's got he's to work on his passing a little bit, though. But 2.8 points per game. Again, almost three goals guaranteed from Decker. These Panthers have got to attack and shut them down. So what are, what are they going to bring for, for today? What are, the, what are the Panthers bringing me, Justin? Well, I mean, all hands on Decker, right? You know, you got to talk about those attack guys. But for the Panthers, they've got Grant Cavan you got to watch out for. This guy's kind of came out of nowhere, hailing from San Jose, California. This guy's really picked it up this season, you know, in place of guys like George McGurk and Dante DeColbus, who has been injured a few times this season. 18 goals, 11 assists, 2.9 points per game. You know, like you said, guaranteed two points for Sun Devils. The Panthers have three goals almost guaranteed when you have this guy down there on the the field and especially for them on the defensive side as well Camden Morris has been a key player for this team in terms of the clearing game you know the, that's the thing that they've been trying to work on the most for this and Camden Morris with that long stick defense that he's got you know a lot of ground balls to his name he also has some goals so he's extremely versatile on both sides of the ball so watch out for him he's going to be carrying that big long stick he's going to be attacking on both sides of the field so we're probably going to be calling his name almost all day my man Absolutely. I mean, anyone that's ever tuned into a lacrosse game or has heard of lacrosse, they know it's a fast game. So we really wanted to put our players to the test and make them, uh, you know, really test their speed with the with the game today. Um, it's it's going to be a pretty big battle uh, between these two. So we've got we we sat them down. Okay, so we're not we're, we're um. Sorry, got a little tongue tied there, Justin. Uh, these guys they're they're battling it out. You know. We, this is going to be the first conference game for ASU. And then the Panthers, first home game in a while after a pretty intense road trip. So the speed is going to be out there today. They're coming up quick. Hopefully the Panthers can come out with a, with a good goal quick. Uh, I know I'm saying quick a lot here, but that is the message of this game and the theme of this game for both teams because they're going to want to bring out the best that they can against these, this conference opponent. Uh, Sun Devils, though, Justin, what, what, what kind of game plan are they looking for? Well, some of those keys, especially, is getting up against, you know, Jason Bollinger. We've seen a lot of those goals come against him, you know, coming right up to his face because that's exactly what you need to do because he can't react within, you know, a millisecond, right? Not If you can react in a millisecond, you're a superhuman. But Jason Bollinger, as superhuman as he is, he is also human at the end of the day, so you can get around him if you want to. So the Sun Devils are going to need that especially. And a lot of this is also going to be, you know, protecting against those attackers. There's a lot of versatility on his team. And, you know, we've seen it on the stat sheet. They, Chapman doesn't have any top 100 scores on this squad. But the reason why they're so good is because they have a, a plethora of weapons to go to with all these players out here. You know, the, the next guy that's pretty much up there in terms of scoring is literally Grant Cavan. He's not even in the top 100 in terms of scoring in the MCLA. So it's going to be important for, for, for Arizona State to limit those guys on the perimeter against, you know, with Aiden Shaw out there as a goalie. Yeah, Aiden Shaw, I mean, he's been... Putting up a lot of good saves. I was looking at some of the, with his stats, the only thing is he's seeing a lot of balls get shot at him. So that kind of is a testament to the Arizona State defense. They might need to lock it up a little bit. Uh, if they're allowing their goaltender to see that many shots. That, I mean, it, if they're good, clean, visible shots, but if they're, they're, they're hot and tight, you know, it looks like they need to lock it up a little bit. But he is also putting up a solid performance as the wall behind them but as you said Jason Bollinger like that guy uh, he's he's not only just a wall in the cage he's also pretty quick up here in the mind so uh, last year they said he's probably the smartest player in the team but we wanted to see how smart and quick all of the players were we sat down with them and uh, asked them some hot questions so check this out the car broke down um I, my bike broke down and uh, I'm sick. <laughs> Class, eating, and sleeping. To go surfing, to go to eat food, and to skateboard. Traffic, missing keys, don't have my phone. Traffic, uh, I forgot something, and I lost my dog. You hit a dog's train skunk. Oh, shoot. My, my brain goes to traffic, but that's like the worst excuse. You should never be late. 
Mars, Saturn, and Venus. Earth, Mars, Venus. Pluto, Mars, Jupiter. Jupiter, Mars, and the Earth. Mars, Earth, Venus. Jupiter, Mars, Earth. Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, Justin Fields, and Walter Payton. LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Venus uh, Williams. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, J uh, Damian Lillard. LeBron James, Usain Volt, James Harden. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. Pineapple, sausage, pepperoni. Pepperoni, salami, mushrooms. Mushrooms, carrots, cauliflower. Pineapple, uh, pepperoni, and uh, cheese. <laughs> pepperoni, bacon, tomatoes. Pepperoni, pineapple, uh, Canadian bacon. <laughs> pepperoni, sausage, mm, Brussels sprouts. Get you going. Let's get it going now. Oh, what does it say? Welcome goodness. to ASU. Get the Sunday Let's How the gorgeous. I, I don't even think we can do the rest of the game, Justin. We, <laughs> after that national anthem, Chris Stapleton, I think I gotta just go sit down and just leave. I know. Oh I, I thought goodness. we were gonna get a flyover for a minute. <laughs> right? I was I was listening for the B2 bomber coming, <laughs> <laughs> coming over. But man, I oh, I am jazzed up to play right now. What about you? Oh, I am completely jazzed up. We're all suited up. We're ready to go. The Give Panthers, me a stick, coach. The Sun Devils, yeah, they're all ready to go, my man. It's gonna be an exciting time. We're, uh, looking down, looking at that field, I like absolutely so excited to get some good lacrosse going. But yeah, uh, earlier we 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 talked to Callis. We got some some insight from him on on kind of how that road trip went and the, and the the vibe and the energy of, of the locker room right now for Chapman. Uh, it, like he he told us they they had the loss to Virginia Tech. It was a little bit of a downfall, but after that they they came back reinvigorated and basically shut down all their opponents since then. So uh, to see what kind of energy they bring out here is going to be quite exciting. Uh, if you want to go into who's going to be starting off this lineup here, uh, we, we got some great players coming out on the field. Uh, over over on the Arizona State side, if you look over up on attack, we're going to have Kyle Decker, Braden Rome, and Ryan Coops. That's number two, Kyle Decker. Number eight, Braden Rome. And 25, Ryan Coops. And then we're going to, in the midi, 23, we're going to have Chris, Chris Rodriguez. And then number one, Owen Kielty. Number 10, Matt Decker. Number six, Nick Eck. And then on the back end, we're going to have number five, Aiden Cox. Number 35, Justin Yoon. And number 36, Liam Johnston. And number 28, Aiden Shaw in net. How about those Panthers, Justin? Who we got coming out on that field? I mean, we talked about it earlier. Grant Kevin, our guy who's going to be heading the front of this attack. Luke Morissette, we've seen him plenty of times this season. Adam McDonald's a newer name that we haven't been mentioned to that often, but obviously doing having a great season this year. Michael Morrison's a different name that is doing the face-off duties right now in place of Cooper Ehlers. Manderson McDonald and Nico Orsino at the wing to start off. And then Josh Bowman, Dante DeColbis, and Jackson Worth at the midfield. Troy Kennedy, Leander Rickers, Cam Morris, and obviously Jason Bolger back inside the goal. So all those guys, very important in this game today. Absolutely, absolutely. As they're about to take off this face off at the X, and we're going to about to get this game underway. Battle in there. Panthers try to chip it out, and it's going to be... Oh. Chapman coming up with the face-off. And we are underway here at Wilson Field. Going in, moving down low. Got the Panthers setting up their offensive attack on the far side of the field. Well, you saw Christ, Chris Rodriguez get away with that face-off. And then Michael Morris, and, you know, he lost it. And then he said, no, 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 you come back here and I take that ball. He swatted it down, got the pickup on the face-off. Great job by Michael Morrison to get that. 
Absolute battle out here as Luke Morissette comes in with possession. Down low, working down as a Cavon. Over on the side wall here. Not really side wall because it's not hockey, but you get my, my drift there. Shot down low into the crease, and we got the first goal. Chapman in, not even 35 seconds into the game on the board. How about number 19 goals on the season for Grant Cavan? We just talked about him. There he is for you guys, the key player for CSBN. Grant Cavan getting you right in there. You watch that quick game over here, the transition perfect over here with Grant Cavan right in the middle of the crease and getting in front of Shaw. He said, hey, how you doing? Top cheese right there for you. Putting it where the Gouda sits. Coming off over to the X. Getting ready for that face off already. I feel like we were just here, Justin. Yeah, face we off down low. Yeah, we were just here just a second ago. I mean, this is a reason why Michael Morrison's even out there with the face off because he's so aggressive, and you just see how much of a you know presence he has out there. You know, Cooper Ehlers, we talked about him plenty of times this season, but Michael Morrison, ten and nine in that game against Liberty University, he has been a phenomenon for this team. Oh, absolutely. Saw so McDonald there come up with the face off scoop. A little change up there as the middies take their break. That's one of the beautiful things about lacrosse. Uh, there is a constant uh, change on the fly for the mids. So you do have those guys that are working more of that 200-foot game uh, with fresh legs. And then when you're on the offense, you kind of get the benefit of having fresher legs because it's a little easier to change on that offensive f fly. It's a pretty even matchup between these two teams today because both these squads have 39 people in total on both of these rosters. So there's you know quite a few depth, but it, it becomes a question of how well this team is going to you know, with the bench points, right? Absolutely. That was a shot attempt from the Panthers, and they were the first one to get to it. So Morissette's going to bring it in, fling it up high. Shaking around on the top. Panthers kind of just giving what uh, the Sun Devils are going to give them right now. They're not really wor wor worried too much about making – too hard a place right now as the uh, Sun Devils giving them a lot of space, giving them a lot of time. They're just going to work their system down low. Well, they're a well-rested team. You know, they had to play a lot of these trap games, so to speak, against Arizona. They had to play it against, you know, a team like Liberty. And now they, you know, they had a week and a half off. And now they're back here with plenty of rest. See Morris out there picking up a penalty, just unafraid to take the damage. He's not afraid to go in those danger areas and battle it out, getting whacked and slapped down there. That's the kind of need, guy you need, though, to really show everyone on the team, hey, we're not afraid. We're, we're, we're here to score. We're here to win. Let's get in those battle areas and, and rush. get it to the cage. I mean, that's where it matters, right? Especially a guy from Portland, Oregon. Those guys are a lot of hard heads. They're tough guys from, from out there in the Northwest. And you see, the, you know, the amount of pressure that Luke, that he takes it from these hits, it's just, it, it's insane. The, you know, the, you never think that lacrosse would be a violent sport like this, but it is extremely violent. Yeah, it, it kind of a interesting, with the history of lacrosse, as you know, this is the first American sport as a, the Native Americans invented it. And they, they're all about, like, you leave it out on the field. This is where you battle. This is where you, you, you get all the rage out. You get all the aggression out. And you're, you got to be happy because you're playing for, for everybody. You're playing for the team. You're playing for the crowd, you know? Yeah, I mean, this game goes all the way back to 1100 CEE, you know, when they had the earliest you know, foundations of this game. It was, they were considered stick and ball games. You know, the, the history of lacrosse, you know, the medicine game is what this game was once called, but invented here in America, Native Americans started this sport, and it's really kind of grown into this big thing in, across the nation. You know, not as well known, but it's really starting to get up there nowadays. It really is. It's, it, I feel like it, it was like an East Coast game for the longest time, but now you can see here we got two West Coast teams, Arizona Sun Devils, the first team to get a D1 hockey team in the NCAA. Now they got their lacrosse buzzing, trying to get a win out here in Orange, California. How ironic is that? You know, Arizona having a hockey team that's <laughs> Division One, The first of the West Coast, too, of all the teams. Not Seattle, not Denver, not something with the mountains. Arizona State. Now working low. Finally, Arizona able to get out of the defensive zone. It seems like they've been down low the whole time. They're going to work their far side. 
That was Jackson worth working on the shot against Shaw. Just wasn't able to. You, you tried the long shot right there earlier, and Shaw made a great play putting the net right over to him. But here's the thing that comes with the goalies is you got to shoot it on the opposite side where the goalies can't get it. That was Owen Kielty. Yes, that's that's absolutely. You got to work that low. Try to try to pull the pull the team to the opposite side. That was Owen Kielty though for the Sun Devils that got the possession up into the deep zone, and then he finally made the change. Now Arizona way down behind the cage, moving the ball. They're trying to look like they play more open game than the Panthers. Panthers were moving a D to D. Arizona working more the high to low game, using that uh, X area behind the net. Whipped back around. A little perimeter game, trying to run it in. Reverse, shot through. A little bit of stick action, but Bollinger picks it up off the ground. They're going to give the Sun Devils possession. Yeah, there was a little push in the back there against Nick Eck from the Panthers' defense, and that would allow them to get this ball back because the stick came in from behind. So obviously an illegal play right there. Ground ball, Oof. battle. Sun Devils are trying to cut. Oh, they come up with it. Loose shot down low. Ooh, and the first Ooh. goal to tie it for the Sun Devils. There it is, one of our other key players, Braden Rome, getting it right in there. You saw they were losing the possession right there, but Braden Rome came in right over, tried to fake it underhand over and put it over the head of Jason Bollinger where he can't get it. And that's exactly what we were talking about, is getting it into the in front of the eyes of Jason Bollinger because you know nobody can react that fast to something like that. Yeah, no, and you can see there, that's why he's scoring all of these goals. Braden Rome with a little High, he looked, if you saw that shot, first move looked like he was gonna go high and then he faked it way down low. Or sorry about that, faked it low and then shot it high. But we're back in play already. It was a nice little move by Braden Rome. Here's the thing that the Panthers struggle with in that four game stretch against all those ranked teams that they were playing against. Is they, Keenan Cowles talked about it, about the transitioning game and you know, the sliding game was also a big thing. You know, they've been working on that on that this past few season, these past few seasons. And Joel Callis kind of emphasized that it's just sliding. You know, when you're in the crease and you see guys open, you got to jump right to them as fast as possible. Absolutely, and it's it's hard. That's you know, when you get the turnovers and you're you're expecting your your defense to pick up that ground ball and push it out. You start to fly out of the area, and then all of a sudden you got a, a guy open net just sitting there next to Bollinger, waiting for that tap in. We're going to give the possession up to the Sun Devils. That ball went outside off that shot attempt. You see where Braden Rome is right now behind the X state, sticking around the crease. There's a reason why he's going to get most of the shots on goal today. He's not afraid as well. Just like, wow. uh, oh, that was a nice yeah, check there. there. Just like uh, Liam, or uh, sorry, uh, Morissette here on the Panther side. Go, Braden's just not afraid to get the damage. Leander Rickers took that away from, from a guy like Braden Rome because he's such a big-bodied oh. individual. What a save on the long stick. Mitty almost made it 2-1 to one there, but goodness. Camden Morris, our other key player on the Panthers, just coming in low, taking out the crease. And it's that transitioning game, right? It's about the clearing, getting it from your defense, your offense fast enough. And that's what Camden Morris does right here with the long stick ability, trying to get it in there. And then he got, it seemed like the Panthers wanted to push off of Morris there, but got kind of tripped up there. And Shaw was a little slow to get up too. So we'll keep an eye on what, what his status is. Yeah, that was a pretty quick intake. This is a contact sport. And usually as the goalie, you're not really expecting that, but hopefully not, not too uh, worse off for wear. Little uh, pressure here by the Sun Devils. It's getting stuck in the Panthers zone. Kind of a bunch ball going on. This ground ball, no one wants to get it, but now we come up, Panthers ball. Yeah. Moving it back to Bollinger. Get the reset here. Yeah, Troy Kennedy had the ball in his hand, lost it for a second, then the Sun Devils were fighting for it. But that's where those ground balls become very, very important. That's what Joel Kaus also emphasized in those games, is that they had to do better on the ground ball game. Keeping it in their hands, controlling the time of possession, be dominant on the field. Always domination, domination, domination. Trying to oppose your will against someone else, trying to impose their will against you. The battle of the battle. 
All right, we got this ball settled down on the far side of Panthers in the offense attack. Works it down low behind the X. Morissette up high. Moving their feet, trying to open up this Sun Devil defense. Back up high. Full shake. Oh, there's a hold. Foul. Shot and picked up by the goalie, but we're going to be getting a penalty against the Devils. Yeah, a little bit of a hold there against Eliza Brugman. They're going to take this one and put a guy in the penalty box. A little 30 seconder there for him. Yeah, that's Fletcher Lohman, number 27, Midi out of Castleview High School. Castle Rock, Colorado is going to be sitting out this one in the penalty box after that hold there against Brugman. You see the coach there, you know, talking to his guy and just making sure that they're making sure that that doesn't happen again. No, you don't want that. Got to got to have some discipline here, especially with this high scoring Panther squad. More set low. Up high. Liking the way this power play is shaping. They're moving the ball, keeping the shuffle go, waiting just waiting for the weakness to show. A little down low. Oh, that was a nifty play there. Panthers are going to get possession. That's uh, Adam McDonald on the shot there. A little backhanded action. I like, the, the, I like that take there from the Panthers, just giving it to the inside guy and trying to get it right in front of the goal. Obviously, it was missed opportunity there. Jackson Worth, nice little transition game. Here he is with the ball. Yeah, Jackson Worth uh, has been dominant on making some plays Oof. happen for the Panthers squad. He's a little bit of a playmaker, working the high point, more set. A little shake and a shimmy, working, using the body and a good shot, high to low, but the goaltender, they're ready for it. Shaw was, will not be determined, or deterred. And this is where that challenge becomes for the Arizona State defense, just stopping those guys from getting in in front of Shaw like that. You can't let him get too far in there and you know just sw trying to swat at that stick as much as possible if you're the Arizona State defense. What do you mean? Oosh. I mean you see the aggressiveness from both of these teams because there's you know this te these teams you know competing in the SLC you know obviously ranked right now Arizona State with 15 Chapman University at number four. So whoever wins this game kind of determines who's going to be the top dog in the SOC Conference for the rest of the, the way going down here in the schedule. Absolutely. So the Panthers, they know the importance here. and The Sun Devils coming into their own, the Panthers jungle, coming out with a win would, would be nice, especially for that first conference game, coming up with a W. But it's going to be a, a long battle here at Wilson Field. And, and I think we've got our our. Table is set for us here. More set with it. Up high. Shake, shimmy. Working through the middle. Little ground shot. Shot. Seeing everything right now. Breakaway, breakaway up. Oh, wow. Oh, what a steal turnover by the Panthers. Uh, Very much. Panthers like had the momentum there. Very much like a football play there, intercepting it, getting it down there. Leander Rickers has really done a great job out here as a defensive man today. Another penalty coming up. Down low. Oh, some slashes coming here from the long sticks of the Sun Devils. That was Aiden Cox with the, the axe over there. Matt Peters gets the the flag there, so he's got to sit for 30. And again, Panthers up a man. Yeah, 30 seconds in the penalty box for offsides call it just a minute ago. And here's where this is where this aggressiveness comes in. You can already tell, you know, how aggressive Arizona State is really pushing on a lot of these Panthers guys inside the box. Yeah, they're not. Looks like they're gonna be. Uh, you still want to have a disciplined game, but it's going to be a physical challenge for the Panthers to come out with a W. Sun Devil's not going to let them walk away easily. You see here uh, on how that flag went down. Uh, there's the offsides there. But with a the shot there. 
Yeah, Adam McDonald with the shot there, just trying to get it in the face of Shaw right now. He's doing really nice back there in the goal. He had a great day, you know, against Georgia the other day, you know, against his team. Shaw has been playing fantastic thus far. It's an over and back on ASU, and a little misplay by the Panthers on that pass back to the D, or the, the midi. As you, uh, in lacrosse, your defense actually cannot come up, uh, unlike hockey where all five players work together. Uh, lacrosse, the three defensemen, they, or they stay down there, uh, stay low the whole time, and then you got your three attack that stay high. It's the middies that are putting in the work with that transition game. Right, and that's where it, you know, it comes away with that, and you know, that hybrid between hockey and, ooh. Whoa, a little sneak in, but we got a flag on the play. Little grounder there, caught Bollinger by surprise. Well, yeah, once again, Braden Rome getting it right under Jason Bollinger's legs once again, putting it in there. That's going to be a second goal of the day. I mean, you just see where he comes in right from the middle edges and getting it right under Bollinger, just bounces off of his shin just right in. Nothing you can do about that. Once again, Braden Rome just being impact. Yeah, impact player. We, we talked about how the, we got to watch out for him. You can see why he's lighting the lamp so much. See if these Panthers can come back. They've been down before. Lacrosse is definitely a game of ebbs and flows, and they've been they've been bringing the pressures. They can't beat themselves up too much with the performance that they've had. We'll see how they recover here. Yeah, they, I mean they had a close game against Arizona, the neighbor of Arizona State. You know they they were close that entire game going through, and then they had a run you know of, of, of four goals towards the end there. But they were tied all the way through that entire game. Ooh, Arizona tried to get a little tricky there. Uh, ASU, I should say. Try to get a little tricky, and Panthers came up, but now they got it rushing through. Brought through. Oh, interception by the Panthers. Back up to the mid, crossing over. They're going to set up, get the changes. You think they would have gone straight with a clearing game there on the breakaway, and but you know, allowing your guys is enough time. Dante just holding on to the ball, giving you guys enough time to get set up and get ready for this attack. You don't want to rush it, right? You know, we've seen that a couple of times watching March Madness because we're in the middle of that season right now. You don't want to be too rushed when you're playing a game like that, especially no. in these fast-paced games. Absolutely not. Back to full. Check in five, All right, we're back to full out here on the field. Panthers possession. Moved up, down low. Working, more set again, taking the damage, oh. just misses high though. I mean, there's a reason why Dante is such Dante, a force sorry. on the field. You know, he, lo he loves putting his body out there. We've seen it on you know, the Instagram, we see it in highlights. We've seen Dante put his body out there every single time he's shot. And once again, another shot on goal there by Dante. That's Dante DeCoblis that always just He's been battling down there. That is the man with the plan for the Panthers these days. Reset here. Ball's in play. A little pop from the back. And that is a shot clock violation for the Panthers. Possession given back to the Sun Devils. See what they can do here as they're trying to bring it across the midline. Still with possession. Works into a double team. Passes it off. Up high. Nick Eck with it. That's Nick Eck and Matt Decker playing a little give and go to with each other as they're letting their team get situated. Coach giving the orders. Well, I mean, what's been working for you so far? It's just been Braden Rome and just keep giving it to him if he's going to sh make shots like that on goal make it easy for him to get in the middle of it. I think that's what kind of Arizona has been trying to set up with this strategy. Owen oh, Keedy with it. Reverse drop back. That's out of play. Rome with it. Charging in behind the net. Get some defense. Still shaking away. Little bounce ball there. Didn't come together. Panthers working for the ground ball. ASU comes up with it. 
And we're going to have a dead ball. Timeout for the Sun Devils here. Justin, this game back and forward, not really high scoring yet. Almost uh, the end of the first. Thought so far on which teams got the upper hand? I mean, it, it, so far, obviously, Arizona has the upper hand right now. You know, Brandon Rome has been putting some really nice shots on there. The Panthers have been kind of missing on some of those opportunities, getting the shot wise on there. You know, Shaw's have been really good with these close-up shots right in front of his face so far against this Panthers front. I think one of the things is just kind of, you know, transitioning fast as possible instead of just trying to run it up in his face. And you, you, see, the you see the number of fouls. We, we're going to probably see that a lot here because these two teams have been kind of aggressive so far against each other today. Yeah, it's been a lot of back and forth physical play. Uh, as you can see, though, they both teams have a couple players that are, are willing to go down low and get into the face of the goaltender battle on that cage. So I, I, I think work in those areas, and but a little bit more movement, getting your getting your off players, the, the, the players that don't have the possession of the ball, getting them moving their feet a little bit more and making a little bit more of a diversion down low uh, to get the, the D to break. I think that's what's going to start opening up the scoring here. I mean, I think we're kind of we kind of expected this game to be somewhat close. The last time these two teams met, right, 10 to 7 was that score. There was four goals by Arizona State in that game and then Chapman scored five in the second half. So, you know, it really comes down to how well these teams are going to be able to last against each other. I think Chapman really wants to get more shots on goal, but they want to be able to get it past shot because so far he has just been an iron wall right now ever since that goal from Cavan earlier. Yeah, ever since the first goal, it's just been shut down, shut down City for Shaw, and ASU now here with possession, up a man. High, shot clock going down as they're... Yeah, they had to rush that. There's a brain room, had to quickly send that goal right to the middle of it before the shot clock expired, so... Not much of a chance there. They were, they were rushed there, but here we go. Under 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Panthers moving it up over the halfway mark. Down low. Making the streak. Let's get this play set up. Moving your feet. Shot down low. Oh, what a stop by Shaw. Rolling off the ground ball. I mean, the Grant Cabin getting that shot off quickly like that. I think that's exactly what you want to expect. Oh, Jackson Ware trying to get a shot there. It, trying to put it towards the cage with the dying seconds of the game. And now we got that first quarter wrapping up. Goaltenders have been playing fantastic on both ends here. Uh, Arizona State, oh my goodness, making that game 2-1 to one with a little sneak in. So, my goodness, just great play by everyone that we've been having but the goaltenders have really been the storyline here in this first quarter. That is right. You know, you see the goaltending here by Shaw ever since that Cam uh, Grant Cavan goal earlier in the first quarter has really been shut down so far this entire time. And you also talk about Jason Bollinger also doing a pretty nice job. But, you know, that Braden Roan guy, he's been legendary for this team so far. And you just you see the stat line there. You know, we kind of expected Jason Bollinger to be, you know, this force right now, which he is. I'm not discounting him, obviously, but 63% save this season. Obviously, you know, last season he has 62%, so he's still doing just as great as he did last year. And Shaw, you know, 56 save percent. I know that doesn't do him justice in this game so far. It's still early, so there's plenty of time for both of these goalies to show off what they've got. But so far, this might be what, what comes down here with this goalie game. You know, you talk about that Utah Valley game that the Chapman Panthers played earlier this season. You know, that, that save percentage was all the way up there in the seven, like higher 72 percentage for both of those, for both of the goalies that were playing each other. That's the reason why that game was such lower scoring. Nine to eight of that final score. Panthers didn't get that win against a really nice team who's now number three in the nation uh, in terms of the MCLA. Just playing solid down there. And the one who's been seeing it in action up close and personal is our own Caroline Chang. Caroline, how has it been down on the field for you? Yeah, thank you so much, Kyle and Justin. Yeah, like you're talking about, the fast-pacedness of this game is quite intense. And you can see the same thing happening on the bench. Now, the Sun Devils weren't as hyped up at the beginning of the game as the as the Chapman Panthers were. And actually, the Chapman Panthers were so excited that they kept crossing the line, and the ref had to keep pushing them back towards their spot so they don't get any penalties. But either way, both teams are super... Okay.
All right, yeah, so both teams are super pumped up. The ref had to push back the Chapman Panthers because they were so excited for their team. And you can see that both on the same side. They're egging each other on. There's a lot of good energy happening on the field. And we're just going to see what keeps happening here. Back up to you guys when you're ready. Thank you, Caroline. Sorry I interrupted you there. I was getting excited. you got to tell me to get back on my side of the line. <laughs> <laughs> it has been quite the battle. No, to hear that, though, it's so funny. You see these, these D1 college athletes are just so excited. To, they're chomping at the bit that the referee's got to tell them to calm down. That's, that's how you know these guys love being out here right now. Yeah, especially in this weather, too, right? You know, tomorrow there's going to be rain in that forecast. They get to play. You know, both of these teams, um, Arizona State has to play San Diego tomorrow in San Diego. Chapman gets to stay here against Grand Canyon. So, hey, a little plug there to the CSBM broadcast crew. We got a game tomorrow, Tier 1, against Grand Canyon. The Lopes come into town. Um, but it's going to be a great game between those two teams. But the rain is going to be a factor. So, you, you know, you talk about that intensity-wise for both of these teams. There's a lot of implications on this field. There's a reason why. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone loves a little bit of weather. We weren't sure how today was going to be, but it has been gorgeous. Perfect lacrosse weather. ASU here trying to make it a perfect three goals in a row as they're working it. And down low with the little pass behind the net. Almost a crease violation, though, as he came down on the landing. Up high. Work shot. Bollinger with the save. And he passes it off so they can clear it up. You know, we mentioned before a lot in some of these broadcasts, the Pythagorean theorem, Jason Bollinger excels in that department in terms of, you know, the stick to hand to eye coordination. You know, you saw the ball bounce off of his stick, picking it right up in front of him, taking it and giving it to his team for the clear game. Yeah, he was uh, writing on the whiteboards over there in the Keck Center, writing some uh, Pythagorean theorem on how to block these shots. <laughs> Working low. <laughs> These, the Chapman Panthers coming out, trying to make another quick goal like they did in the first quarter at the beginning of the second. That's a save by Shaw. He didn't even realize he had it in his net. Talk about that luck today so far for Shaw. I mean, so far in this game, he has blocked almost seven different shots on goal so far You know, against this Panthers team. Really setting out the plan here for Justin. Oh, a little battle here low. D just... <laughs> he just ran straight into a wall. That was Kyle Decker trying to make his presence known, our key player of the game. He's like, hey, boys, I want to get on the scoreboard here, too. Well, you saw Decker get in there, and then you saw Jason Bollinger take it himself and getting that ball away. He, he, I think he said, he's just saying he's tired of, of Decker getting back there against this Panthers team. Yeah, Bollinger definitely doesn't like having guys in his area. He's, got, he's not afraid to get physical out there. It's all about personal space, my man. Exactly. This is my crease. All right, Panthers setting up position here up at the top. You got Jackson Worth on the near side, supporting as they streak low on the far side. Coming up, Worth with it now. He, Worth's one of those guys that can <laughs> definitely work it from that D point and get down low, shake off a D band or two. And he creates that havoc for the player that's down low, especially guys like Koblis that'll come in and pick up the rebound. Yeah, that was a really tough pass there by Jackson, where just missing his guy, overshooting him. And, you know, when those, if it's not a shot on goal, you don't get that ball back, it gives it right back to the other team. So they got to be, got to do a better job of controlling that ball in, the, in their stick. Now ASU crossing over mid here. They're trying to get set, but Panthers. Quick on them like honey. Bees to honey over there. Yeah, you know, I think things are just working out so far for the Panthers in terms of just getting the shots on goal. I think it's just a matter of how many sh more shots they need to and just trying to tire out Shaw at this point. So maybe we might see more goals in the second half. I'm just trying to predict it right now. But, you know, so far Shaw's been doing a really nice job against this Panthers front. Well, you mentioned that storyline earlier that the Panthers do seem to have a little bit more of a second half performance against this team. So... We'll see how they do. And I, I feel like that is kind of the Panther story. A lot of these, they got to take a, they come out a little excited, takes them a minute to get settled into the game. But once they start getting the rhythm and start applying their game, everything is, it kind of falls to place. But an uh, unfortunate slip up there. He had the breakaway, but then Beasley just took a little dinger on the, 
on the midfield. I think Sniper got him or something. And I think he did got a touch with the green monster out here today. <laughs> We've seen that a few times. I mean, that's the difference between turf and regular grass sometimes. It just you know, depends on what kind of cleats you wear on, on turf field and grass field. Sometimes you're just going to slip. And obviously the green monster grabbed out, reached out with his hand and grabbed him by the legs. Pulled him down. I believe uh, there's a radio station on Chapman Radio called Pete is a Punk, Pete the Panther. So maybe he was out there planting some some landmines. Against his own team? What are you hey. talking about? It was a miss. It was a misfire. Misfire. Friendly okay, fire. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> ASU down low, trying to work something here. Not a lot of action towards the front. That's Nick Eck working the ball with Matt Decker up at the top. ASU. Oh, what a turnover by the Panthers. Working up low. Here he comes. The man, the myth, the legend, Troy Kennedy. Yeah, how about that? No Troy relation. You know, you talk about Cam Morris and Cam Morris, too. You know, that tandem of both of them with the long stick defensive play. Both of those guys are a reason why this team defense is really doing nice so far. We got Brugman up at the top now with it, trying to open up this uh, Sun Devil defense. Got to make the change, though, real quick. They, we don't want any offsides. Bringing in the man, Luke Morissette. We talked about how he's not afraid to get low and take the danger. Let's see what these Panthers can do. Oh, a little high off the shot by Dante. <laughs> got a little Dante Jacolibus. I think you got a little Pete the Panther in your throat there. Yeah, I got excited. <laughs> I was just, you know, just like these Panthers, just trying to do it too much too quick. Rip through oh. and score by the Panthers. Tying goal. Oh, my goodness. That was a beautiful shot there by the Panthers. Just getting it right in there. Looked like Elijah Bruggerman was our guy on that shot. That's his fourth goal of the season now. Denver, Colorado, my guy out there. That was some good work. Again, kind of like we talked about in the mission, got to take away the eyes of the goalie, working a little bit more. The, the, the players that don't have possession need to start moving their feet. They, they took up the lanes there. A little high-low play. Shot comes through. Bouncer and in. Yeah, a little nice assist there by Dante De Colbis. Obviously going to need to get more of that action here today. You know, you're going to need a lot of that. Dante De Colbus, that's his third, fourth assist on the season. Good to see De Colbus get the, the A column going as well as the goal column. I mean, how about this? I mean, we're, we're already in the second quarter. It's only 2-2. Two to two. This usually doesn't happen in these games, you know, a lot. Especially with this high-scoring game like this. Right now, it's just like a soccer score. Yeah, this is a, I kind of these are the games that you, you really kind of enjoy a little bit more because of how the structure of the game is being played. Both teams are playing well defensively. There is no lack of trying just because it is a 2-2 game. There's been a lot of shots. The goalies have been outstanding. A lot of missed shots, but this defense here whacking at him, shaking off the Panther D. Uh-oh, got a risky shot, but a stick over top denies the shot. Possession given back to the Sun Devils. That was uh, Max Mullick on the shot there, the freshman from San Juan Hills, California. San Juan Hills High School. Hey, San Juan Hills in the house, coming back to the old hometown. Oh, Bollinger stretching out to make the save. Shot was wide, but man, love to see the goalie down like that, sacrificing the body. Cameron McNeil is going to do whatever it takes. You know, Jason Bollinger doing whatever it takes to defend his goal. He's got a broken stick on the ground over there. Oh, cross over the goal. That was a beautiful play from the X up to high to the D or the mid man. Almost, but Bollinger not to be deterred there was not taken by that little play. That was a shot there by Matt Decker. That's Kyle Decker's brother out there playing for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Always good to have some brother brotherly love on the team. Support each other. All right. Yeah, speaking of brothers, you know, the Ursino brothers. I mean, obviously, they don't hey. play on the same team, but, you know, Nico and Gio, two of the most well-named uh, players in terms of Chapman Athletics. 
Oh yeah, we definitely love the Arsino brothers here. The Gio and Nico. That's just a fun name, but credit to the parents because both of them are great kids too, on and off the field. Really humble, really polite. They'll take the shirt off their back for them. And you love to see that on the lacrosse team as well. Morrison now with it. Trying to shake up these long stick middies, or defense. Ground ball, ground ball. Battle. Still down. Still down. And ASU coming up with it. It's Cam Ross with it. And they finally get over the mid. Working low. Taking the wax. That's Owen Keelty. Oh. Yeah, nice oh, good nice. pass up. A little good pressure from the Panthers causing that. And here's that, you know, Cam Morris, you know, again, you know what, there's a reason why he's a key player, really putting a lot of pressure. And now that they're figuring it out, you know, with Brandon Rome back there behind the X, they're really putting Cam Morris in their best defensive guy against the best player for the Arizona State uh, Sun Devils and really protecting him, you know, because obviously he's already got two goals already in this game. So you got to knock out their best player, put some pressure on the other outside perimeter players. Holden Walker starting the play here. Another shot, picks up his own rebound. That's uh, Reset. Reset. Morissette coming in. Shot. Oh, oh. they'll ground it, but the only person there is a Sun Devil. Oh, good job there, Holden Walker, to pick that ball up immediately after you know that weird that shot that just bounced off the ground just didn't get enough momentum to go towards Shaw in the goal there and give himself a little bit of some redemption here for Holden Walker. That's Rocco Reginelli out there, number five. That's been working down low, picked up his own rebound. Freshman, I, could, I couldn't even find him on my roster. And a little shot, three, two, Panthers, goal. That was amazing there by Adam McDonald, a freshman out of Yorba Linda. That's his 15th goal of the season. How about that for a true freshman? Jack Worth with the assist. These freshmen, I mean, we talked about the example that the seniors have set. Look at these freshmen making moves, making plays. That's how you get into the good books of those upperclassmen right there with a shot like that. You know, Adam McDonald, his name was not known, you know, throughout the MCLA. He's starting to make it known because of what he's been able to do for this team. Five foot ten, hundred sixty pounds, coming in here as a freshman and really showing out. There's a reason why he's one of the day one starters for the squad so far throughout the stretch of you know these ranked games that they played. Oh, as we're breaking down the goal, the Panthers come back and score again. Charlie Beasley. My goodness, how are you? I like that little call out there, coast to coast, butter toast by the announcers here. That's a nice shot there by Ch Charlie Beasley all the way from Colorado, putting it right in the back of the goal. That's his third goal of the season. Yeah. Put a little bit of some seasoning on that goal. Call that a little salt and pepper. My goodness, back to back goals, put the Panthers up 4-2 and they already got the back, went in the face off, pass off near side. Resetting, that's Grant Cavan with it. A yeah, little timeout. We got a flag here against Michael Morrison. He got pushed down to the ground. His helmet came off after winning that faceoff. And this is the other thing that Joel Cowles was emphasizing a lot was just the, the faceoff game. They've got to dominate on that side. And there's a reason why Michael Morrison has really taken over Cooper, Cooper Ehlers because he's been so dominant. He's such a physical player out there on the faceoff duties. Absolutely. We love Cooper Ehlers, one of my first classmates here at Chapman. 
But yeah, if you're if you're the one performing and you're you're taking off, it's you know sometimes you gotta be humble and pass off the ra the the crown to the next guy. And with that kind of performance and the way the amount of faceoffs won, give it to the kid. All right, Panthers up a man here. That was Fletcher Lohman that got the penalty sitting in the box. Nice little shot there on the power play wrapped up by Shaw. And this is where that, you know, the Panthers are just excelling in terms of, you know, as soon as they score a goal, they take that momentum away. They use that momentum to their advantage. They ride it off again. You know, we were just talking about the goal from Adam McDonald. And then all of a sudden we look up, Charlie, Beas Be Charlie <laughs> Beasley has scored a goal already. That's you gotta love the depth. Got to love the depth. When all when you got players buzzing everywhere, you know it's it's like the unfortunate side for the the Sun Devils right now. Their their top score, like you said, is getting shut down, and now it's kind of getting stale. So let's see how they adapt with uh, not really having the the offense firing on all cylinders as they were at the beginning of this game. Well, I think you just try to get back to to Rome back there, but he's got the best defensive player for the Panthers you know, in his face right now. Oof. Oh, and another play broken up by the Panthers, shut down. Rome trying to get it back. You can tell he's definitely hungry. Yeah, that was Decker, that pass off there by Rome over to Decker, bounced off of his stick, bounced on the ground. And so far, I mean, De we haven't seen too much from Decker, you know, being one of those key players. He's got, you know, a total of 22 goals in this se on this season so far. I'd like to see him more out there on the perimeter. Absolutely. All right, and the Panthers here are going to take a little bit of a timeout. Great, great effort all around from both teams here. 4-2, though, quick shots, quick aggressive offense from the Panthers. Sun Devils, wh wh what are they going to do against this uh, high-flying team right now? I mean, you got to stop guys from putting it in front of Shaw like that, and you talk about the transitioning stuff from the Panthers, and... You see, you know, the shots like these, unfortunate right there oh. with the, the broken stick, and he just drops it. That's Cameron McNeil, and it's just, it's the, the head of the stick there, you know, it didn't right into the bone just free. Oh, man, he's got to throw <laughs> that one in the goal. Okay, well, a we're getting a lot. I mean, he sees a lot of flying objects heading towards him anyway, so you, he's okay. He's used to that type of stuff. But, you know, it's it, so far, you know, the Sun Devils are, you know, getting the shots up there, but they haven't really taken a whole lot of shots against Jason Bollinger so far. And, then, you know, some of those unfortunate events, but utilizing Rome and getting him outside the X, maybe boxing out Cam Morris back there with the, with the defense right now. As you can see, they're checking the heads of sticks right now because of that head flying off like that. Uh, kind of interesting, once you get into the higher levels, a lot of these players, they, they, they take care of their own stick, like, you know, a hockey stick, you kind of get the whole thing, and then you're, you're responsible for like taping it. These guys, they gotta put, they gotta put the head on the stick. They gotta the, tie their own ropes, tie the basket in there to their, the the torque that they want, but also keep it in regulation. So you really gotta have some some care for the, your uh, equipment when you're a lacrosse player. I mean, that's your baby right there. You know, you take care of that. You go to sleep with it. You read a book to your stick at night and, you know, take care of it as much as possible. Right. Baseball players put some oil and sleep with it under the mattress. <laughs> Lacrosse players sleep with their stick cuddled up. That's how we do it. All right. Panthers already coming off the timeout with hot shot attempt. Fortunately, it goes high and wide. Panthers run it out and get possession. Coming back into the play. Down low. Oh, oh wow. bouncer. And he makes a goal line save. Shaw almost let that one sneak in. That was a crazy shot there by the Panthers. And you saw the single effort by Shaw there. We've got a breakout coming here from the Arizona State Sun Devils. But, you know, Shaw there, again, with the def you know, sitting back there in goal. You know, defense hasn't been helping him out too much on the perimeter side of things. But so far, you know, he's putting it all out there on the field. We got Nick Eck here up on the top for ASU with possession. Kilty uh, coming in. He's going to probably work down low. Back around the perimeter for the Sun Devils. 
Matt Decker, kind of the key quarterback there at the top of the key, but with it now, Eck down low. Ooh, almost had a chance there, but he kept going wide. Good defense by the Panthers, not allowing him to cut in there. Well, you see the bunch box there by the Panthers defense right in there. And this is where that sliding game comes. Very important. Just putting your guy out. As soon as you see him come right in front of Bollinger, protect that goal. <laughs> Big save by Bollinger with a breakaway for the Panthers. Sprinting down. Good rush. Shake shimmer shot Ooh. attempt. Unfortunately, not on net. That was a great run there by Nico Rossino. Speak, we were talking about him earlier. Just like his brother, he's got the legs churning. But yeah. my goodness, not unfortunately, it couldn't make it a 5-2 lead going in there. But the Panthers do have the doubled up, the Sun Devils here, 4-2 to two going into the half. I, I feel like the second quarter just buzzed by. I didn't even, I was like, wait, didn't we just finish the first? Justin, what's been going on out there on the field, my man? <sighs> Talk about the Panthers just dominating in that second quarter and getting the goals back out there and really taking up the momentum here. I mean, it is a very low scoring game so far. Arizona State still keeping it somewhat very close in this matchup. These two teams have played up to some really close matchups in the past few years. And so far, the Panthers were down by one. Uh, to, to start off the second quarter. And now they've jumped all the way into this lead, leading by two right now. And, you know, here they are really taking it, taking the momentum and putting it fast against the Sun Devils. But credit to the Sun Devils. They've been able to keep these Panthers at bay so far. And Shaw has got to continue to play like he has been so far. Absolutely. You saw there just before the end of the half, ball was trickling on the goal line, rolling in. Shaw reaches over, scorpion move, keeps it out of the net. And uh, we got a beautiful highlight package as this game has been buzzing back and forth. So let's go break down those highlights for you on what happened here in the first half. And we've got the first goal right off the bat. Chapman coming in. It was just like we, we literally sat down and had our coffee. And then ASU coming back in hot. This guy, lead, the leading goal scorer for ASU, puts two in. Couple shots there, just unfortunately wide. And, and here comes that second little sneaker past Bollinger. Just an unfortunate bounce for him. That was um, Braden Rome, who's got the two goals for ASU. A little bit of a lull in the battle until finally we got the Panthers back in on the shot. My goodness, Elijah Brugman coming in with the snipe bouncer there. And then finally coming in a little bit, played down low with the shot. The freshman number 33 coming in clean, Adam McDonald. And right as we were still talking about that goal, we got another low Beasley with a little top cheese. How you doing placement goal? Love seeing that work right there, Justin. Yeah, I mean, you saw Beasley out there with adding a little bit of seasoning on that goal and, you know, telling Shaw like, hey, Call Me Maybe as Carly Jepsen's famous song is playing out here at Wilson Field. But so far, it has been high-powered offense by this Panthers offense. They just need to get some more going here in the second half. Definitely. And the goalies obviously have been playing well. They've been doing great. They need a break. We need a break. Call us later, maybe. <laughs> and as so we come to the second half, you know, we'll have the call for you. Thanks for tuning in to CSPN. We'll be back after the half. I'm Kyle Carr. Justin Lee, Caroline Chang down on the field. We'll be right back.
Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to the field. My name is Caroline Chang and I'm here with Coach Callis for the Chapman Panthers. How's it going today, Coach? It's doing well. It's a beautiful day for some lacrosse. That's so true. Now, I've got some questions for you. So, strong end to the half. Um, it was incredible, really tight, fast pace, but what does this team need so the momentum for that half, that, that quarter, will carry on through the rest of the game? Definitely. We need to keep working hard on the ground balls. You know, every time that ball goes on the ground, we got to have two to their one. If we can win that battle, that gives them less possessions for them. All right, and then also take care of the ball in the clearing. That makes make sure we can get the ball to our offense. And our offense is starting to pick up some momentum there. So that's really what we want. Just get the ball to our offense. They'll, they'll start to figure their defense out. Right. And, I mean, I talked to you, like, before the game, like you mentioned, control the controllables and about that like defensive side. What does the defensive block need to do to keep making it solid for this uh, rest of the game? Yeah, so we're doing a really good job on our one-on-one matchups with the short sticks. They're attacking those guys. So as long as we can maintain that matchup and not have to slide to them too much, we feel pretty good because they're a big crease feeding team. So if we can kind of protect the crease, play inside out, I feel pretty good with, with our chances there. Awesome. All right, that's, that's it for us. Back to you guys in the booth. Awesome. Thank you, Caroline. That was great to hear from Coach. Good to hear that he, uh, he's he got some confidence and, you know, really trying to see what the what, if they can apply what Coach is asking, especially with those clears and those ground balls. Got to be a little bit more consistent and, uh, you know, control, like you said, control the controllables. That is very true. And, you know, you talked about those, you know, I've got my Lee's keys to the game. We can do a little checklist there. So far, you know, for both these teams, in terms of the goals, uh, Shaw has saved nine goals that have taken Shaw against his goal. You know, Bollinger hasn't seen too much. He's had three saves so far today, but Shaw has seen a lot more. Obviously doing a great job back there. The shots on goal from the Panthers, they've taken 20 shots on this guy. And Arizona State, only nine shots. So they got to utilize that shot a little bit more, get some more in there against Jason Bollinger. One of those keys we were talking about was, you know, get in Jason Bollinger's face, challenge the Panthers' defense, and, you know, on the offensive side for the Panthers, you know, don't allow Chapman to get around to the X to the goal. And so oh. far, Arizona State's defense has been doing a great job of that. Absolutely. As you said there, you know, trying to get more shots for the, the Sun Devils, there was a little perimeter play there, and as they tried to probe through, the Panthers just shut him down completely, just took his stick away from the play, and then a little shot through there uh, by, the, by the ASU Sun Devil player there. That was Nick Eck trying to get through. Yeah, he was trying to do the little sniper shot. Ooh, nice little tip. Nice. That's good work. Again, there's that tie power defense for this Panthers team, Troy Kennedy, that tandem with Cam Morris back there on the defensive side. Just putting that stick out there, you know, blocking, getting interceptions, that's a big key here. And we talked about, Joe Callis talked about it, dominating the ground ground game. That was one of the that was two, one of the two keys that we had for Chapman. You know, dominate the ground game, use your best scores against Aiden Shaw, and the Panthers have definitely been doing that, but Shaw's been doing a better job at protecting his goal. Camden Morris working the ball into the offensive area, one of our key players. Thank you, Justin, for those Lee's keys to the game. And good to see the Panthers. You kind of predicted it there. We didn't really get to cover it before the uh, pregame, but you kind of had them all <laughs> covered right there. You basically predicted this game for us. If they just would have listened to you, we should have had you down there talking to Coach Callis. Don't call me a genie yet. <laughs> And down below the net, Panthers have possession in the offensive attack area for themselves. Back up to the point area. 
Working low, diving. See the move there, a little high-low ball, trying to get that bouncer. That's Josh Vohman that's been working the put point over here. A little fun fact about Josh Froman. Did you know that he could squat 405 pounds? 405 on the squat? That's like my leg lift rack and a goal there as we're talking about squatting. That ball squatted. Shaw did not. What a bounce. Chapman up 5-2. You talk about the squat game from the Panthers and Josh Froman, but how about Holden Walker putting that goal right in the back there? What a nice shot there by Holden Walker to get that one in. That's his 11th goal of the season. Great stuff on the bounce shot. I love seeing that on the replay. You've got the support there. Dante Dekolovic just giving the fist pump. These boys know that they are buzzing right now with the 5-2 lead. Let's see who can win this faceoff X. Panthers again coming up with a little bounce off back. And they've got the win there. That makes it 7-3 on the faceoff wins. That is some great stuff. And we talked to Joel Callis, like we said, dominating on the ground ball game. Here's the other thing about the Panthers in terms of the theme. You know, this young team as well. You know, Holden Walker, that's another freshman that has scored goals for this team. The, there's a lot of true freshmen on this team, and a lot of them from Colorado. Colorado, the Avalanche uh, area, that <laughs> Colorado Avalanche, sorry. Yeah, I was thinking, we were talking about uh, getting up in the, the cold weather at ASU having a hockey team. You would think it would come from Colorado, but looks like they're kind of the lacrosse makers right now. As ASU's breakaway, trying to sprint down, long stick, Mitty with it. He's going to break away, try to beat the offsides out. Shot out wide, Bollinger there for it though, and it goes wide. I like the idea, just on your breakout, and bring it down to the field, give it to your best guys. Kyle Decker transitioning over to Ro Raiden Rome, got it right in there, but he's a little too far away from Jason Bollinger. Like we said before, it's just getting in the face of Jason Bollinger. Get up there, don't stay behind because he's gonna react very fast to those shots because that is exactly what he's trained for. Yeah, a lot of perimeter shots for the uh, Sun Devils here, not really going into the deep area where, yeah, there's the confusion, the D all bundled up, a little bit more uh, chaos down low, whereas those high shots, he can read those all day. It's like playing catch. Oh, oh, and there we go. Talk about getting in the danger area. Goal by the Sun Devils after a little battle in the middle there. That was a beautiful shot there by Ryan Coops. That's his 15th goal of the season, getting right in there, putting his body on the line and diving right over Jason Bollinger. Great play, great physical play there. Love to see it. Look at this right here. Comes in, read low, passes, and he just dives, gets it into the placement. That's called playing the body right there, being physical, taking the damage. I like that. See, that's exactly what we were saying putting it right in front of Jason Bollinger, get in the middle of the defense, challenge the Panthers defense, make them force you to knock that ball out. Yeah, when you're up that close too, you know, that's that you can put that racket anywhere, the stick, like who knows where that release point's gonna come and that's just where the goalie gets all, you know, fumbled, gets a little frazzled and you get it in the net just like we saw there. Let's see how ASU can come back here as they got possession again off the face off. Up high. On the near side, little change up there. Working down there, trying to get that play again, set up that set piece into the bumper. Little bop there and another goal by the Sun Devils. James Garland with the goal there. They worked it down low again, just like we just talked. Little bit, they set the set play that just scored the second one. That one didn't really work out. He got it right on the right side off the frame. Puts it up high on Bollinger. That was a great stuff there. James Gartland, that's his 11th goal of the season. You see Jason Bollinger communicating to some of his guys to kind of fix that defense. And again, I think they're starting to figure it out now. You know, getting in front of Jason Bollinger, that's exactly what they need to do against this Panther team. And now bringing it close, 5-4 to four is the game right now. This one's getting heated, getting tight. Panthers come up with the faceoff win. They're going to try to get something back here after two goals given up. Oh, a nice shot, Sean. Right on it. See, this is the interesting thing about a guy like Michael Morrison. We've seen that before, actually. He does have one goal on this season because he 
when he takes his face off, he, it can surprise you. They usually don't tell us that about these specialty guys out there. He got a goal against USC like that, trying to make a, something happen here against Shaw. Yeah, those face-off specialists, if you can get the possession quick and just chug those legs in, that's a, <clears throat> that, that defense doesn't get a chance to get set. The middies are still trying to figure out where they're going, and all of a sudden you got a goal in the back of the net. Right now, Sun Devils have it. They're going to get their situation figured out. Behind the X. They're starting to get that perimeter game. You saw him just score. Ryan Coops. Keep an eye on where Ryan Coops is at. He's down low now, but look, he's walking towards the edge. He's a big body. He's already got a goal. He's feeling it. Now he's back behind the X. See if they shake up their players, try to move, cycle up out where they have those forwards and those attackers at. Oh, down oh. low, that pass went through, but the Panthers there to break it up. If they could have gotten that one through, that could have been the tying goal right and there. And that was very close, too, to happening again and giving it to your best guy in Rome. And you notice the Arizona State Sun Devils are putting it between the posts now with their offensive players instead of just putting one guy in the X. And now they're taking advantage of that, crossing it over in front of Jason Bolger. So his eyes move very quickly. You see this play right here. And, you know, Rome could have had that one, but it got knocked away by the Panthers' defense. And, again, really challenging the, that defense for the Panthers. That's where you talk about the slide and the transition game. We've been mentioning it a couple times here. If you can get the, for, the defense to move like that when you got the attacks constantly switching, moving that east to west game when you're down low like that, that, that slide game is so important because you can miss that next player. We got a couple flags up here on the play. Both coming from both officials. Up low, shot through, but saved there by Shaw. I just got his net on it. Let's get offsides. the call here. Offsides call here against the Panthers. ASU. Oh no, ASU, my bad. Yeah, ASU, because I was going to say, they let the play go, so it must have been on ASU. Get the official call there. The crowd here is... Still filing in. We got people coming in on the second half. Good to see the Chapman faithful. And even some of the Sun Devils made the trek through the wonderful desert through Coachella Valley to come here. Yeah, I see some of the foam fingers out here with the trident symbol that the Arizona State Forks guys up, use. guys. I feel like if I was an ASU player, every time I'd score, I'd say, Forks up, boys. Lunch is served. <laughs> Literally, that's probably what they do at those parties. <laughs> Obviously, ASU being one of those big party schools, right? Absolutely. I think that's about 90% of their reputation is partying. But their athletics give them a chance to party. All right. I like this umbrella down here in front of the section with the lighthouse. It's Pretty nice. You know, obviously the sun's beating down out here, but we're not going to get too much of that this weekend with the, the clouds coming in with the rain. Yeah, it's uh, been an interesting time here in uh, Southern California because there's, there's been some umbrellas for the sun and some umbrellas for the rain. You never know which one you're going to need. As the Sun Devils here just kind of taking their time. They're down a goal. You would think they would have a little bit more in, uh, encouragement or a little bit more fire under them to get this offensive play moving. Finally, their pieces are where they want them, and they're going to start moving the ball around. They've been moving around the field a lot. They're just trying to give themselves a little bit of a rest and just you know, hold on to that time of possession right now. You know, they're under 20 seconds on the shot clock, but just take what, they can, what the Panthers are going to give you. See if the D even let them get a shot off, and that's off. Bollinger touched it. Shot on goal there, so the Sun Devils will keep the ball, but no shot clock reset, so they got to get this off quick. Down low, up high. Just using the sticks, using the sticks, and that's the shot clock off. There we go, Panthers ball. Little air horn went off there, and just before he got that shot off. 
You know, I'm kind of surprised sometimes, especially with these teams out here, just looking at the shot clock. A lot of these sidelines usually count down that clock out loud. I haven't really heard much from the sideline in terms of just keeping track of that shot clock, but obviously the Sun Devils nearly got that away, but just holding it on too long. Yeah, usually it's kind of like the, the unwritten rule. You help your boys out on the field if you're on the sideline, given the countdown, but we're all so excited up here, so maybe we just didn't hear them. Who knows? They're not as loud as us, Justin. No one does it like we do. All right, Panthers coming in. Up high, freshmen are in play here. Down low in the X. Let's see if Dakota Libis can create something here with the move. Oh, oh. He, kind of a, looks like he was trying to go for the shot or maybe even the pass there. Going to the ground, That's you just love seeing the physicality out of these players. Yeah, Dave, Keaton Davis got in the face of Dante DeCalvitz as he was trying to make it in there. We know that Dante loves to use those spin moves to his advantage and getting right into the middle of the goal, and he loves to put his body on the line, but great job to the Arizona defense for challenging the Panthers' offense. Morissette now working it low. Work behind the X. Little set play there. Decolobus. You know he likes to battle uh, you know, with what they're feeding him down there in San Clemente, probably some pizza port, but that guy is definitely a beast in the ice, or the, the ice, on the field here. Unfortunately, shot clock violation for the Panthers. Now the Sun Devils get to come up with possession. Yeah, once again, just not keeping track of that shot clock for both sides here. And oh, little push from behind. Let's see, the refs let it play. They're calling it off the shoulder instead of the back there. That was very close of a call. <laughs> that may or may not be a moment of discussion later in this game, depending on how this score ends up. But a little controversy there. Always love to see that. I mean, again, just highlighting the importance of this game in terms of both of these, both of these teams. This kind of sets the precedent for the SLC. You know, as they're getting into more of these conference play games for, for both of these teams, like you said, Arizona State, this is their first conference game. So setting the precedent in this game, they can get a win here, is going to be just as important as winning the SLC. Absolutely. This is where the it all starts to work up. This is where you put in the, the, the grind to get to that championship. It all starts today. And a big save by Shaw. Honestly, keeping this Arizona State team in the game. I don't know if they, they, they'd be doing much without them today. Well, I mean, let's, let's talk about that here, right? Five goals from, from the Chapman Panthers. He's had about, what, 20 saves on his plate so far and just really showing it out there. So that's about, you know, he's right up there in the 70% save percentage. That's really great for a goalie. And that's exactly what the Panthers saw in that game against Utah Valley. You know, the game that they lost, you know, it was because both goalies were just playing phenomenal. Yeah, it's very, it, it seems like whenever the Panthers kind of run into a strong goaltender, we got a little controversy, a little action down here on the field. Some penalties being thrown. Kind of the bench is getting a little frustrated here. But yeah, the goaltenders, if, when the Panthers run into a hot goaltender and it's kind of more of that goalie battle, it gets a little scary. And I think the boys start squeezing their stick a little bit more because they're trying to uh, apply that offensive pressure that they normally get. So we'll see how they go through the rest of this game here, if that's not going to be a determining factor or not. The Panthers this season, this year, as we're checking this um, replay here of the penalty, you oh, see that little yeah. push that out there. That is yeah. definitely, that, hey, if I'm a betting man, I'd say that's a cross, a check from behind, but. Josh Fomond, and obviously he's got the upper side because he can squat 405 pounds, right? Hey. You go. You got to do what you got to do when you squat 405 pounds. Sometimes stuff happens. <laughs> That's why he's like, I'm just strong. I don't know. But here's the thing about the Panthers. Just this, you know, this season they're one of the. They're obviously we we know that they're one of the best teams in the MCLA. They're averaging six. They were averaging 16.4 goals per game going into that Utah Valley game. You know. The real thing that's been keeping them in these games has been Jason Bollinger. He saved 16 in that game, allowed six goals. He had a 72.7 per save percentage in that game. But even with that, it just wasn't enough against a, a Utah Valley goalie that did 75% saves that entire game. And here we go, Panthers with the turnover, trying to pick up the ground ball. And across the halfway, here they go. Ryan starting to move the legs. 
on the far side. Getting reset, making sure the changes are through. Nico Rossino came through. He's gonna make his change after handing it off. Holden Walker waiting for the key pieces to come out. Holden Walker over to Reganelli. Rocco Reganelli, freshman here on this team. He's starting to quarterback here. Again, Panthers with a lot of freshmen on the squad. Not really uh, a overly dominant senior squad like we saw last year. But it's good to see that these guys, even though they are younger, they're still coming in, not afraid to get physical, not afraid to uh, start to implement the, the Panther way of play. I mean, that's right. And you just talked about you know, the freshman talent that they have on this team. That, that senior experience also is very important. Luke Moore said being obviously one of those guys, Grant Cavan being another senior for this team. That's a lot of experience out there on the perimeter for this Panthers team, showing a lot of these young guys the ropes. Absolutely. It's called, you got good culture, and the Panthers seem to have set that culture. Ugh, Dante oh. DeCalb has had a nice shot on goal there against Shaw, and it just went over the crossbar and just wasn't able, and he's frustrated on the sidelines right now. Definitely, with, especially being sh down short, that you, it would be great to get that goal through. Make the, that one goal buffer is just not enough right now. Oh, that is. Uh, another flag down. That is oh, two. we got words being spoken. Oh. He asked how what he had for lunch. He said, hey, man, you ever been to Finney's? It's pretty good. It's getting chippy, especially it with is. these conference games, right? It, you know, when you have these rival teams like this, things get out of hand. Ricker is getting fired up on the sidelines here, had something to say to the Arizona State team, but... Again, you know, when it comes to these conference games, you just gotta, you just gotta not do this this type of thing. You just gotta put yourself in front of the team. Don't try to do anything dumb. You know, put your team first, not yourself. And Ricker's got a little fired up there, as you see on this replay here, and just, just gotta control the emotions here. You know, you guys are in a close game. Don't shoot yourselves in the foot. Yeah, it looks like that might have been a definitely a younger player on that ASU team that Ricker's is getting upset at. Um, Look like they had nothing to do with Rickers. They didn't want. They're not. They're not falling for that. They're not getting into that. But yeah, look, gotta control the emotions here. You do have the lead. You don't want to let this lead slip just because of un unfortunate emotion slips. But again, I mean, Rickers has been such a force on this on this team so far today. Uh, he can have a little bit of emotions out there. Just oh yeah. You no, know, definitely don't try to do that again. Obviously. <laughs> uh, oh. And then unfortunate capitalization by number 10 there on ASU. That's Matt Decker tying up the game on the penalty. You can see Rickers not happy about that. And again, we talked about, you know, every action has consequences and obviously that, that's exactly what happens here. Decker getting the sniper shot on Jason Bollinger, getting it off the ground, the nice bounce shot there. And we were talking, we need to see more of Decker out there. And that's exactly, here we are. He's shown his face once again. Getting in on the score sheet, Decker. Good, good snipe there. Let's see if the Panthers can kind of reset here mentally and get back up in the lead. This game back and forth. It's the second lead now squandered by the Panthers. I mean, this is just as low scoring as the Utah Valley versus Chapman game. This has been so close between these two teams. Honestly, good defensive battle. The goaltenders, again, like we've been talking about, Shaw just outstanding as the Panthers put one in, making it six to five. What a beautiful play down low. Handed off to Grant Cavan for his second of the game. And again, one of those key players is the reason why Grant Cavan has, has been such a force out here for this team. That's another goal to, to add it to him. He's breaking the 20 mark now with that goal. Some great stuff here from the Panthers and just rallying back together after that goal earlier from Matt Decker. That was a beautiful pass off there by Decolibus. Up high, little hoppy pass. Uh, and beautiful placement there with the last dying seconds of this third quarter underway. Panthers come up with the face-off win. Decolibus back down low. He's fired up, and another goal! What a play, Decolibus! Oh my goodness! That's a hat trick, friends, that's a hat trick. 
Oh my goodness, that was insane. Just getting it right down there and quickly switch over to Grant Cavan and putting it right in the middle of the goal. How about that from Grant Cavan? Two in a row, number three, like you said, the hat trick coming in here. Right off the face off, we got Coach Callis trying to get his team back, rile him up, timeout was called. We don't want anything to give the ref any excuse there if you're the Panthers squad. What a play. That was gorgeous down low. Again, Dante DeCalbis, that's his third assist out there. You know, he, again, we talked about using your best players. Dante DeCalbis, Grant Cavan, using those guys against a goalie-like shot. And that's exactly what they've been doing. And that's why they're having success right now. And that was a killer goal for the Panthers. That takes momentum, and that can take the juice out of a team like that. Colvis, like, they talk about you finally give up that that pass or the tying piece there, and uh, you feel that shaking up after get letting the mental game get a little away from you. But to come back and have DeColvis just basically feed Cavan some candy for lunch right there. So. Here's what's happening right now on the field. If you're just looking at, you know, we're not, they haven't started the fourth yet, but there was a little bit of some questioning from the refs and uh, Justin uh, Straker here. They're just checking to see whether that, I mean, obviously the goal worked, but they were they were arguing about the, the time in particular, if that goal caught, got off in time and they added uh, about one second on the clock. So that goal will go through and a uh, little bit of some controversy, but again, you know, it's important to watch these plays here with the refs and, you know, obviously in a very close game like this. Exactly. Just got to make sure, especially as the officiating crew, you got a tight game. You want to you want to make sure your eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed. That's what they did there. Double checked real quick timing. And uh, yeah, so that was just what we were doing there. The last second of the face off. And so now we're back up here in the studio after the after the third. We've uh, with that game. The, the Panthers were raising their goal score, but we also have a little bit of a fundraiser that's going on. Justin, can you tell me about that fundraiser? Yeah, I mean, this team obviously being a D1 club team, they, they you know there's no association with Chapman University in terms of their you know NCAA affiliation, so they have to you know get cash on their own to get the rides up to these away games, to get flights, to get equipment. So it's very important that this team wants to have that kind of success and continue to have that kind of success. So if you want to know more, this QR code right here in, in this corner, you gotta. Scan that for some more information and you know check that out because they're gonna need as much support as possible. Absolutely. It, it's crazy that these guys are out here and like, yeah, they're not the normal NCAA where they got the, the hookup with the school and they're on the school program or whatever. These guys are full-time regular college students while also playing this club sport and having the busy schedule almost as if they're an NCAA. So the, that, that fundraiser is just amazing. And, and to see these guys, the, the encouragement that they have and, and, and the way that they, they come out here every single day and play like professionals, it's just awesome. So anything you can do to support is always great. Get these young guys out here. We want to see the Panther squad as successful as possible, and those kind of donations help with that. Absolutely. Well, uh, I believe we are going to be sending it to Caroline Chang right now just to give us a little bit of some updates. Caroline, what you got for us down there? Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, it's been an absolute roller coaster of emotions down here. We've got Arizona firing back like crazy, getting those two, those three goals, pardon me. That was crazy. And then Chapman said, no, 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 let me turn that back around. And now it's 7 5. And here we go again. And it's just going to be a roller coaster of emotions. We'll see what happens here in this fourth quarter. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Caroline Chang. Yes, we are underway here for the fourth. I, I, you know, honestly, I think she might have the best seat in the house of all of us. Caroline, right there on the field, getting to hear the coaches, pick their brains, hear the players, heal the competition between the benches. It gets spicy down there. I'm sure that it's not like there's glass or anything separating them. They just get to yell at each other. Oh, spicy and zesty, that is for sure. And that's the that's what she gets down there, you know, getting that front row ticket. You see, you know, the amount of chipperness that we've seen so far. She's probably got a front view of what has been happening down there. And, you know, we talked about it, you know, for both of these teams, 
so much implications. The Panthers have been riding this wave of just, you know, that back-to-back -back goal earlier from Grant Cavan. That was so nice. That was chef's kiss right there, you know. And But the Arizona State, you know, they've been keeping themselves in this game because of Shaw. Absolutely. Shaw has been a, a brick wall for them. It is 7-5. to five. Panthers, however, Shaw, this score could easily be 25-5 to five if it wasn't for Shaw today. And ASU down low again with the goal, making it 6-7. Seems to be kind of the crutch of this Panther defense. Once ASU is able to work it into that like 10, 20 foot area, they're getting scored on. That's right, and that's exactly what Cups does here. That's his second goal of the day from Ryan Cups, and that was just that was just a fantastic goal there. You know, all the way from Henderson, Nevada, getting that second one. And again, we talked about just getting right in the right in front of the face of Jason Bolger. He makes him in between his legs, putting it in the spot where Jason cannot put that net down fast enough. Yeah, that was Camden Morris kind of getting bodied there as well. Big body from Henderson, Nevada. I had a feeling there was something I was unworried about. You know, being those Vegas kids, you gotta watch out for them. And here he comes, getting his second of the day. ASU again with possession, coming in from their defensive side of the field. They're gonna get their pieces set. It is kind of interesting how there is kind of like a game and ship when you finally get that possession into the, the your side of the half. The other team doesn't really pressure you. You know, they're, let, they're sitting here, they're kind of letting it go. Absolutely, and the, you know, this is just coming down to this, you know, this fourth quarter stuff. You know, this is where all matters right now. Arizona State getting that goal back earlier, and now they're just looking to tie this one up and give themselves a chance against, a, you know, they're the underdogs in this game. They've got to, they want to win this thing. They got to, you know, continue to do what they've been doing. Shot on goal here by number six. That one went towards the back in the, Arizona will get this ball back. That was Nick Eck on that shot. All right, ASU, that's right. Working. Oh, here comes a shot. What a block by the Panther D. My goodness, getting in front, just sacrificing the body there. Gotta love to see that. All right, Panthers have it here. Grant Cavan with it. Lander Rickers brought it down, made the change. I think he's let that uh, penalty go after after the unfortunate score there. But the head has been cleared, and now we've got possession by the Panthers down low. Working it. Morissette with a shot off, saved by Shaw as well. Still in play. It's a reset. That's a reset. Fans crawling for a reset. Yeah, they do give it to him here. There's been a couple of calls here from the fans uh, talking about those resets and just trying to get everything in line here. Oh, if that play could have gone through. That would have been something, but unfortunately, a little bit of stick-on-stick -stick action, the ball comes loose. That was a great job there by Aiden Cox, number five from Dallas, Texas, getting his stick out there and just reaching over and blocking it, giving his guys a chance. It's exactly what they needed to do, take as many chances as they can get here, get more shots on goal against Jason Bollinger, and just doing what they have been, you know, seeing as a as, as success piece is just getting in front of him. Absolutely. And the ASU team here now with it. They got it down low quick. And that's our one of our key players of the game, Braden Rome with it down below the X. But it's passed off up to the D. Frank Kirk here. Cameron McNeil tried to get in there. You can see the Sun Devils now definitely trying to probe the middle a lot more than they were. They use the perimeter game at first, and then as soon as they start, they clear it up. Now we got Panthers clearing it up. Got to make sure they don't get off sides. And again, that great defensive job from Cam Morris. There's a reason why he is back there. There's a reason why he's one of the best players on this squad. Even though he got bodied off that last goal, he's still a dominant player all around. 
I mean, he's Jason Bollinger's favorite guy. You know, Jason Bollinger mentioned he likes to ask a lot of wacky questions, but there's, those questions are for good reason. You know, you got to communicate with your best defensive guys with your best goalie. Exactly. A curious D-man is always a best friend of a goalie because they want to make sure they're doing everything to help that goaltender out. Panthers working it low. Good little battle here, but Shaw comes up with it off the ground ball. Oof. They're trying to clear, but a missed pass. Panthers got possession, but they're going to give it back. What was that call? Not exactly sure why they said that ASU could have it. It was just a missed pass. A little shot quick, but Bollinger got that one, ate it up. Yeah, Keaton Davis had missed the ball there, kind of bounced off of his net. And the Panthers tried picking up, and then I'm not sure what the refs were trying to call there. But again, Arizona trying to go a little too fast. You got to get set up in the middle, set up on the offensive side, get your guys up there, like you, you know, work around the net a little bit, then throw it across, put it where the, you know, you're putting your two guys on the other sides of the post, and get right in front of Jason Bollinger, make him yeah. confused. <laughs> Absolutely, that's New Stratton working it down low. Gonna do a little uh, give and go. With DeColobus. DeColobus just taking the punishment all game. I swear, that man is just not afraid to get whacked, pushed, shoved, hit. He just takes it all for this Panther squad. Yeah, now so ASU trying to fly. Yeah, and so far Aiden Cox has been that guy just for the defense, putting a lot of pressure on these Panthers' offensive players. And just, you know, you saw that play there, just pushing him onto the side and getting that ball away. See Braden Rome right there trying to snipe one past Bollinger, but luckily that went wide. But that could have been dangerous there. Again, the kid's just got quite the shot. Yeah, quite the shot indeed. And again, it's just going a little too fast. Get your guy set up. Don't brush this thing against a guy like Jason Bollinger because if you do and he sees you coming around, he is going to see that from a mile away. Rome with it again. Matt Decker back up high. Working in the middle, oh, Owen Keaty, Keelty. Shot, and it's tied again. Score for the Sun Devils. That was Kyle Decker working the middle. That was a beautiful shot there by Kyle Decker. And he, again, like we said, switching it off between the guys, make Jason Bolger confused, make him follow the ball with his eyes. And as soon as it misses him, you see this great play here over to Decker, shooting it right between, right, right over his left shin and getting it right into the goal and tying it up. And here we go. Tied game again. That's the third lead the Panthers have squandered so far in this game. Let's see what happens after this faceoff because after the last time they gave up the tying goal, they came back quick and scored two. Seems to be the theme here. Panthers up with it. Kyle Decker, that's his 23rd goal of the season after that shot there. Both Decker brothers have a goal today. So mission accomplished for the Decker brothers out here. It's like Decker and Decker out here. Or is that Black and Decker? That's Black the brand. And Decker, Black yeah. and Decker. Home Depot up in this house. All hands on Decker. Yay, there we go. Panthers are going to need all hands on deck in the offensive zone. Decker the Halls. <laughs> what a play, but what a save by Shaw. Oh, my gosh. I thought that was guaranteed. Someone has quick reactions. That's exactly what Shaw did. Grant Cavan already having three goals, was trying to get his fourth, and Shaw said, nah, -uh, took it away immediately. And that was that's tough. That is an extremely tough play to make, especially if somebody is right in front of you. I don't know how fast you got to react to that. That was just absolute athleticism from Shaw. Oh, just right in his kitchen. As he's going he's been down too. So well. Yeah. Shaw saw Crank having cooking, served him the meal. Shaw said, "Get that out of here. Send it right back to the kitchen." I don't want that for lunch. <laughs> get back there and get me something else. All right, we got the Sun Devils with possession. Top of the key, far side, back down to the X. That's their man right there with it, working low. Kind of the, this play style, when you start working, now they're moving, kind of lulls the defense into a little bit of a flat-footedness. So that's, that's kind of the strategy. Work the perimeter for a minute and then start to work in the inside. 
And that's been given up. That's kind of the kryptonite because that's what Bollinger has been given up for these guys. That's what Joel Cowles was talking about before game was just, to, you know, that sliding transition game to, you know, from the defenders to the offense. And it's been working. And here what? it is in, in what fruition. What a poke. Did you see that stick by Cam Morris? Oh, my goodness. With the turnover, brings it all the way down. Straight up uses the long stick from behind to break up that pass. What a beauty. Going back to Arizona State, yeah, that strategy's been working for them, crossing it over between the defenders, giving it off to the guys, to each other. That's the style of play that they need to continue to play here. And, you know, with just under six minutes to go, they got plenty of time to do so. Absolutely. Elijah Brugman trying to make sure that the Sun Devils have nothing to say about that. Now he works down low, back up high. Oh, a little off pass there. Battle on the ground ball. That's uh, a push, and so they're going to give it back to the Panthers. Yeah, that was a very easy call to make there against the Arizona State defense, putting a push in the bank there as he was trying to get the ball. Now Panthers have it in the X, trying to get set. Uh, another high pass, unfortunate for this Panther squad, trying to keep possession in the offensive attack. Couple ground balls, bouncing it around. And Sun Devils are gonna come up with it. They've got numbers if they hurry. And the Panthers luckily get back on D to shut that one down. Yeah, there was a small window there of opportunity for Rome to pass it off to number 11 there on that transition and just wasn't able to clear it enough, but it's a good decision to get your guys set. You could hear Peters yelling for it. Right now, ooh, they got a little triangle set up here on the defense against the Panthers. Arizona State is kind of confusing the Panthers defense, but now they're reset here. Got to start sliding. Watch that low area, little communication between the defense of the Panthers. Up high, big steps. Trying to open up the D. Little pass there, Rome, but Bollinger with the save. Beauty. Transition that a little bit more, and you could have put that right between Jason Bollinger's eyes, but he saw that all the way through with that great shot by Braden Rome. The best of the best facing off of each other. That's a matchup we have been watching all day. Holden Walker now spreads it out. This goalie battle has been quite fantastic. But Shaw, honestly, he has been making this. The reason this game is still tied is up to Shaw. Panthers here creating some momentum. Works low. Shaking it off. Pass it up. Back up high. Worked in. More set. Over to Walker. Walker moved in. Down low. Oh, and there it is, the breaker, 8-7, Panthers goal. Hello, Grant Cabin. Welcome in here with his fourth goal of the game. Getting it right behind, got to confuse the goalie there for the Arizona defense. He had a dive to try to make that attempt, but before it was too late, his Cabin put it right between the goals. Absolute beauty from Cavan. He has put the team on his back today. He's broken three ties now. What a beauty. Well, he scored the first goal, so obviously breaking the 0-0 tie. Then he just broke the 5-5 tie, and now he has broken the 7-7 tie. Absolutely, and I love that play there. Holden Walker passing it over to Grant Cavanaugh in the X, and that's exactly one of those keys that for Arizona State was not allowing the Panthers to get in the X and get in front of the goal like that. That's exactly why you'd say, because Grant Cavanaugh, he's going to do that to you, and he's already done that four times today. Four times. That is absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen those numbers in a game since McGurk was here on Wilson Field. Now we've got some good plays. Chapman still with possession, trying to make another two-goal lead happen. Morissette fending off the defender. Working low. Pass it off there. It's, it's funny you mentioned McGurk because he is down there as a graduate assistant for this team right now. So Love he's it. watching all this happen. You can tell he's definitely passed off that hard work mentality and the, the playmaking mentality. Ooh. Morissette battle, trying to get it. It's still not out, still not out. 
who's going to get possession. And they're giving it to the Sun Devils. Uh, yeah, that's a very close call there. I mean, there, uh, there was a lot of players fighting in that zone against the line there. They're tight roping it over there. But here comes that chance for Arizona State to even this up. You see Callis trying to guide traffic there. Now Arizona into the zone. <clears throat> timeout here for the Sun Devils. I like this decision here, getting your timeout, give your guys a little bit of some strategy. Talk to them. Talk to them about what should happen here. You know, you're under a minute and 30 seconds to go. You've got plenty of time to do something. You might have maybe one or two possessions left. You've got to utilize this possession in particular. So that's why Justin Stryker is using this timeout right now to talk to his guys and give him talk about that strategy right now. Absolutely. And we're going to have some saves here from Bollinger. You see, the ASU players just... When that's from that deep area, he's going to see that all day. It's basically like playing some catch with the boys, passing around with your D-man. But if every goal we've seen from ASU has been either a in tight bouncer or just that quick east-west pass off play. So love to see Bollinger hold it down. Shaw, he's been giving a, the Panthers faithful a little bit of anxiety because they cannot seem to break him. But it is an 8-7 game. Panthers up 75 seconds left in the game. Plenty of lacrosse left for this ASU squad to bring back the tie. But I don't know. The way that Cavan has been playing, that is Grant Cavan straight out of San Jose, California. Big, he's got six foot, 180 pounds, and he's got four goals today. I think he's the one saying forks up, lunch is served tonight. What about you? <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner is the Absolutely. definition here, you know. And um, for, for this possession right here, this is going to come down to the best players utilizing on offense for both sides. You know, if Arizona State, you know, manages to tie this game up, I, you know, expect the Panthers to utilize their best to finish this game. And here we go. This is the hype moment for both of these teams. I can hear some ASU chants going on. I hear some Panthers chants going on. This is what it's all about. 75 seconds, a one goal game, D1 lacrosse, orange California, orange suits, orange ties. Let's see how this game finishes up. ASU with it, down low. Probin, long stick. That's Cam Morris putting the pressure down there with that long stick. He trips over his own shoes. There's no flag. Let's see. They're talking about it. They're having a communication. Yeah, Decker trying to make a last-ditch effort there. He was going down. He tripped over a player, making a shot on goal. Jason Bollinger saw it all the way through. And... You know, easy stuff there for the team, and now they're going to call another timeout here. I think this one might be the Panthers that took it. I think Arizona actually took Arizona, this timeout. Arizona, okay. Yeah, because yeah, if they had possession, technically still. Or it might be an official ti uh, timeout. Oh, I mean, this is where, you know, this crunch time, we're going to see a lot more of these timeouts here. we got a minute to go left in this game, but this is where legends are made. This is where storylines are set. And this is the precedent that's going to be set for the rest of the SLC conference, depending. They're all probably watching this game right now. San Diego State's watching this game. Arizona's watching this. You know, all the, you know, Grand Canyon's be wa going to be watching this. You know, they, they, both of these teams don't get a rest day tomorrow. They're going to be playing games after this. So, you know, whoever comes out of this is, is riding the momentum into those games as they play tomorrow. And, you know, obviously one team is playing a, a really tough opponent, San Diego State. Chapman is going to be playing Grand Canyon tomorrow. So whatever happens here, it sets a precedence for the rest of the conference. Absolutely. This is one of those games you don't want to write off any opponent. But we do know that every single one of the teams in this conference, they're definitely watching CSBN Live on YouTube right now, watching this broadcast because we're accessible to everyone. We're all about inclusion here at Chapman and at CSBN. But let's see what is included in the last 55 seconds of this game as ASU does have possession in the attacking area off that far side. Waiting for all, everyone to get set here so the ref can give the whistle for the reset. We'll be underway. 55 seconds left in this fourth. Here we go. Down low, ASU working up high. 
They're going to try to make some confusion down low, so watch for those cross plays there. Yeah, they're Back through. Now. Oh, shot attempt, but Bollinger stays tall. A little uh, wide, too. I like the approach here, trying to get it out on the long shot. Ooh, nice little one-handed stuff there. But again, get it in front of Bollinger's face. Oh, there we go. And now Panthers with 19 seconds left are going to have the possession here. Let's see if they're just going to wind down the clock. All they got to do is just hold on to the ball, protect to that Bollinger. ball all the way. To Cam, Cam long stick. We got the fans, the faithful here yelling Cam to just take it. Yeah! Do it, do it for the Camdens in the world. And that is going to be a nine, eight, seven, six, and five second win here. Ball's up. Yeah! There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Chapman Panthers come on top eight to seven over your Arizona State Sun Devils. Theme of this game so far, Justin, my goodness, we thought it was going to be the goaltenders, but all of a sudden we got an offensive eruption coming from Cavan. Just absolutely lit the lamp in the second half of that game. He came through super strong for, for the Panthers squad. But, I mean, Shaw on the back end, you can't write him off. He was just stellar, stellar player for the Sun Devils today. Yeah, and that certainly was. And give credit to the Sun Devils here. They came out here against a really great opponent. They put it all out there on the field. You see the respect being shown here by the Panthers players. And it's just, you know, for... It's just all, you know, game, recognize game type of situation out here. Arizona put it all out here on the field. You know, they get a chance to go after another really good ranked opponent tomorrow. So, you know, give them credit. They fought all the way till the end in this game. And they had a really good chance to, you know, steal one away being the underdogs in this game. And, oh, my goodness, it was such a close game. And we talked about the goalies holding it tight down there in the first half. And then all of a sudden they blew it up wide open in the second half and started opening things wide open. And then, you know, goals, multiple goals from Grant Cavan today. And then, you know, Arizona responded easily. And, you know, we talked about it. They were going to break the goalies down sooner or later in this game. And that's exactly what started to happen in that third and fourth quarter. Absolutely. I think it, it's – I find it very fitting that we – we focused a lot on the coaches and what they had to say about the teams today. They, there's always a saying, well, especially in hockey, show me a good goalie, I'll show you a good coach. Today, the goalies were on fire for both teams. And I feel like the coaches really were on fire as well. The strategies, we, everything that we brought up that, hey, I think ASU needs to fix this or the Chapman Panthers need to work on this. The coaches did it. It's like they had a, a straight up line into our booth because everything that we mentioned that they needed to work on, they adapted their game to that style of play. And it came through with how, how the pl players played throughout the rest of the game. That is very much so. And we can see that through, throughout the highlights th in, throughout the entirety of this game. You saw the adjustments that both coaches made. Straker and Joel Callis made the entire game. You talked about it. You know, just the fact that they were able to adapt in every single situation. You saw the strategy started to change up. You know, Panthers started utilizing their best players. And then Arizona started utilizing, you know, that fact that they had to put it right in front of Jason Bollinger, putting two guys on both posts and getting it right around him. And, you know, but all the strategies worked here today, but obviously the Panthers just came out on top. Oh, definitely. They they put in the their strategy came in through a little bit of upset there. That was, that was probably the most heated moment of the game. Uh, no f no fisticuffs, uh, luckily for that. <laughs> but uh, that did lead to the tying goal there uh, when we when the Panthers had the lead earlier in the game. But Panthers, luckily, there you can see that tying goal right there. Unfortunately. Or unfortunately for the Sun Devils, fortunately for the Panthers, they were able to come back and bring back the lead again. Man, that, that guy from Henderson, Nevada, just a stellar performance. And then again, they, it's just like, here we go. It looks like ASU is about to bring the win, but then Panthers luckily were able to shut the gate uh, right as those Sun Devils started to bring back the offensive opportunities. Yeah, they were raising the bar all day against this Panthers team. And talk about raising fundraiser. And, you know, we talked about it earlier, the Panthers, the fact that they have to, you know, help themselves out, the, you know, being a club organization. Um, again, if you want to figure out some more information, there's a beautiful QR code right here. 
in this corner right here. Scan that, pick out, take out your phone, pull out the camera app and scan that. And if you want to know more about that and supporting the Chapman Panthers, if, that's, if you so choose to. I mean, today has just been such a great game. We had we haven't seen a close game like this in a while because they were away for a while and you know we cut they come back here into Wilson Field to get this huge win you know after a back and forth roller coaster of emotions you know playing against Liberty playing against Utah Valley playing against Virginia Tech Arizona and now they get a pretty you know easy schedule going on the rest of the time here you know they're gonna, they're gonna have to go play UCLA the only time they have to face another ranked team is San Diego State and then they get into those playoffs but. This is a statement win for the Panthers. Absolutely. It's exciting to see where, like, I wonder where the teams are going to be by the time they do meet up with SDSU. As, as of now, SDSU, the only undefeated team in our conference. However, I'm sure the guys down on the field are buzzing, and they're going to take this win and advance into those next couple of games with the energy. Our own Caroline Chang down on the sideline has our MVP of the game. And uh, Caroline, what's going on with them down there? Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm here with number 12, Grant Cabin. This is Caroline Chang. So uh, Grant, um, four goals today. And the game winner, uh, you were the catalyst for the offense all day long. So what was working for you today? Honestly, it was a hard fight the whole time. But at the end, we knew it was going to be a fight. So we just went hard. Nothing really specific, but everyone gave it their all, and we, we killed it. Absolutely killed it. No, yeah, you guys absolutely did kill it. And then, obviously, like a low-scoring game, especially especially against Arizona, which is a very tough of <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Okay. What was that? You're good. You're good. I was just gonna say, um, Arizona, super tough opponent. But like, um, what does it mean to have this really big win against such a solid opponent? Oh, it's huge. It's gonna build our momentum for game tomorrow. We got another SLC team that we need to beat, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited. It's gonna be a great time. No, yeah, absolutely. And then finally, like tomorrow, like you said, you're facing off Grand Canyon. What does this team need to keep that momentum up to keep growing for tomorrow's game? It's a great question. Honestly, we're just having fun right now, and the hope is that we're going to have a team meeting later, talk it through, and just be prepared. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. All right. Back to you guys in the booth. Awesome. Thank you, Caroline. For that, hey, talk about getting mobbed by your teammates. Obviously, that guy is the MVP today. you got to love to see the boys loving each other down there. Justin Lee, I mean, I won't tackle you right now, but I love to hang out with you. It's been a great time calling this game. Final thoughts on this one? Final I, tomorrow, you know, Chapman is getting going to go play Grand Canyon University. Stay tuned for that game because obviously we're covering that game. So check out tomorrow. No plug there for you guys. And um, you know, Arizona State they go play against a team. You know, San Diego State they get a little nice experience against the Panthers today. Use that information as you're going into a great team like that because San Diego State is obviously an untested team. Arizona going to use that experience against this team to take that all the way through. And man, I mean, today was a showing for both of these teams and um, really, really close game. Absolutely. Every I think everyone here in the SLC is buzzing right now. Lots of great things to look forward for both of these teams as they move towards those playoffs. I think the Panthers are going to walk away with this one. Hel heads held high, definitely with that win. ASU, they're walking away. They can also keep their heads high. They had a great game. They're going to build off of that goaltending performance today by Shaw. And we're going to build off of our performance today and be live tomorrow on CSBN Live for that Grand Canyon game. I'm Kyle Carr. This is Justin Lee. We had Caroline Chang down below, Kaylee Smith producing, and Stephen Hogan Camp directing. Thank you, everybody, all of our crew here at CSBN. Have a great day.